Hello, well, here we are, two weeks in a row, Robin the Inwit back again to break down Australian Survivor Heroes vs Villains. Nice to get some consistency happening. But we've had a pretty decent week of Survivor. Nothing like last week, nothing over the top crazy. A lot of frustrating stuff for me personally, and I'm assuming a lot of people watching might have been also pulling their hair out or screaming or being super frustrated at what we saw, especially Sunday night. But we do have the elimination of Geordie, the foolish elimination of Geordie. Um, we do have the very safe vote out of Ben, and then the non-tribal episode with the mutiny. And we all, I would hope, we know Australian Survivor does love those non-tribals, and we were due. We were due for one. I was, as soon as Geordie was being full, I was really hoping that tribal was gonna be our non-tribal. Unfortunately, not, Geordie does go home. Uh, and then we're completely bookended by these three episodes with the comedy of errors that is Simon. Uh, and he is providing me personally with immense joy watching him bumble through this game. And for a super, like he is a super fan. He loves the show. He loves the, he's, he's loved the game for a very, very long time. But to see him bumble through so poorly is a joy, an absolute joy to watch uh, for me. So, so that's how, that's how three episodes. Let's chat about it. Uh, we have, we had the starting of um, Simon really trying to solidify himself within this alliance, within the meat tray, within the heroes team, ditching, um, ditching Liz. Geordie's already, oh, well, Geordie's not gone just yet, but he is ready to let the, let that go and really lock on in and hopefully get what he really wants to be with a super physical tribe, the stacked uh, the most stacked tribe in Survivor history. He he's really wants that more than anything else. And more than at the moment, because George isn't there, more than getting rid of George. So once again, Simon is very blindfold, uh, off, uh, blinkers on, and he can't see anything else. And he gets this offer to hand over his idol, or his idol, um, to earn trust, to earn uh, honor and mateship from... Sam, uh, and Simon's all in. This would have been, I mean, Simon was so close to being Eric, the ice cream scoop guy. He was so close. Uh, I mean, he's not far off it at the moment, but God, if, if Sean and Sam and that crew were as ruthless as Sari and Parvati and all that, he was, he was gone. I'm pretty sure Parvati was part of that as well, but yeah, Sari definitely orchestrated Eric's removal. Um, so we have a, a moment where he's going to give up his idol and then we get the very beautiful, beautiful um, Simon soliloquy of the Michael Caine speech, at the, or not the Michael Caine speech, the Michael Caine line at the end of the Dark Knight um, where you either die a hero or live long enough to see yourself become the villain. Um, and he can't get it right, and which is just everything about Simon's game. He just can't get anything right, and it's a joy to watch. It's a joy to see himself blunder his way through, but he gives his idol away. We also have someone like Haley, a very smart woman, going, are you sure this is an idol? What makes you think this round piece of wood with a gem in it is an idol? Never, never does Simon question it. Never at all. Um, he's like, no, it definitely is. It has to be an idol. Why? Why? For someone who is such a fan of the show, more often than not, if anything, if anything, a nullifier. Because nullifiers tend to be a bit more of a, that disky shape. But he is convinced without any other reason other than he found it was hidden in the cookie jar. And that's all he has to go by. And they trust him. And funnily enough, I ran into Sean at work, he was at the zoo the other day, like literally yesterday, and I asked him, I'm like, hey, did you, re like, what was the go with Simon's Idol? Did you believe it? Did you have any doubts? And his response is like, on the island, it's very hard. You don't know what production's gonna throw at you. So you kinda, you kinda have to go that there is potential twists and changes and turns all over the place. So they did trust it. But anyway, they take it and they send it off to Flick. And this doesn't come into play until the next episode. Meanwhile, we have Shawnee still 
with her hidden idol, wanting to send it across to Liz. And we have this nice little communication that we're starting to see over these episodes where your, your people are having little whispers, pre-challenge, post-challenge. Uh, Shoni says, it's all right, I've got the idol, I'll save you. In that next time, Liz finds her own idol. And you know what? Out of all the new players, I mean, there's not many of them left, Liz is doing a really good job. Liz takes this idol, but still knows she can take Shoni's idol. And then we get this moment where she potentially has two idols. However, she gets it to give, be given to Geordie. I would have much preferred Liz to hold on to two. I don't think Liz is a massive fan of the show. I don't think that she's seen a large amount of the show. But what we had is with her having two idols, we quite easily could have had that glorious moment in Heroes vs. Villains, um, the original one, where Parvati has asked for Russell's idol to save her, pulls out Russell's idol, but pulls out her own idol and saves her whole posse. And even though Russell is on her alliance, kind of blindsides Russell with that fact. Doesn't, like, blindsides him in the best possible way, but just shows how clever she is playing this game. We have this moment where Liz quite possibly should have had two idols that nobody needed to know about, that come tribal council, she plays one for Geordie, she plays one for herself, Liz, and then the rest of them sit there and go, whoa, we have been outplayed completely. I probably would have, um, again, not knowing where the other idols may be. You take a punt. You have your vote and hopefully Geordie's vote. Chuck it on Sean. Yes, Sean has an idol. Um, would he play it in that chaos? Possibly. But still, if he played in that chaos, the worst comes to worst, you do get rid of... Simon probably goes as collateral damage. Maybe Sam could have gone. Maybe, maybe Sam could have gone. Or what they could have done is split. They could, have, they could have gone one each. So idol is played. If, it's just, if they just stay together, everyone stacks in on... Well, the heroes, the old school heroes split their votes and stack it in on both Geordie and Liz for safety, if there is an idol. All Geordie and Liz need to do is go, Sean, one vote. If they wanted Simon, the other vote, sure they can, but Sam or whoever else, I probably, I probably would have gone, you know, I probably would have gone Sean and Haley, split the votes right there. You get a tie, one, one. Now, everybody else, Geordie's immune, Liz is immune, everyone else, and Haley and Sean can't vote, everyone else must vote one of those two off. These two very big pillars of that tribe. One of them is going, Sean possibly in, that, in the chaos, Sean plays his idol, Sean's safe. If he doesn't play his idol, we go to the tie, one of them goes home. If Sean plays his idol, Haley goes home. It is a big, massive play. One of the biggest plays possibly would have, we would have ever seen on Australian Survivor. Huge, huge play. However, we don't get that. What we get is Shoni passing the idol to Geordie. And unfortunately, as much as Geordie really doesn't want to be working with the alpha guys, he is an alpha guy. Geordie is an alpha guy. And with the alpha guys, the ego is always going to come in. And so what we get is that moment around the well where they have that little discussion. They're safe, that's it. They don't have to worry, this is it. They currently have absolute power. That's, knowledge is power in this game and they have all that power. No one knows both of them have idols. We all assume one has an idol. This is it, complete power to dictate this vote. You don't need to do anything. And then we get Geordie going, I feel really powerful. I don't, and this is, oh man, I've talked about this for years and years. Every time someone gets an idol, the next thought is how can I keep this idol for longer? And so we get that moment where this absolute power becomes a big downside because he wants to go and threaten the two girls, threaten Haley and Nina. Hey, you can't get rid of us. We've got idols. We show us, we show both our idols and now you're gonna vote with us. 
and this is where knowledge is power, does not work. So here we have a moment which we haven't seen in a while where on Survivor, absolute power, absolute, uh, absolutely corrupt. In Survivor? On Survivor, absolute power corrupts absolutely. And this is this moment. We completely get an absolute meltdown of what should have happened. A vote where both of them should still be there today. A vote that could have led to the absolutely fracturing of that tribe. They had complete control. If they had managed to get rid of Sean or Haley, that core alliance falls to pieces. Sam wants to stick with unity. Sam's going to be upset, but Sam's, Sam doesn't have that um, strategic mindset. Haley would have gone home because I would assume, Sean, in that case, you would play your idol because you're like, you don't know what's going to happen next. Haley goes home, not as, not as strong as Sean going home. Sean would have really dismantled a lot of that, but you still take out a massive threat. Opens the tribe up completely. Yes, sure, you do have less numbers, but you're not always going to go to tribal. There is the chance that two idols have just been played. You go out and find them again. It happens all the time. They might want to come back at you again, but if you've gone out and find them, if you go out and find those idols, you come home to camp, you go find those idols, you get them again. But you've caused a rift. You've, you've taken out the central pillar or one of the central pillars of this alliance, meaning we now potentially have free agents. And we kind of see that in episode, the third episode this week where... Nina, because she's, you know, she, she's lived and breathed Survivor for a long time. Nina knows what needs to be done. Side with Liz, take Liz on. She likes Dave. We get Dave's first confessional. So I don't really know what's going on with Dave at the moment, but we see a little bit of him. He's really liking Nina, the Nina relationship. Sam being on the outs, Sam not having any strategic prowess is a really easy take on board. He's already been... Uh, he's already had the votes against him and that causes him some stress because the loyalty is gone for him and he only plays with loyalty. So if you can get him on your side and understand what happened and take him on board, he's a great one to take, take with. So then we get that four, that really nice four that would, aside from immunity, um, aside from mutiny coming in, would have really caused some chaos, which would have been a nice, nice thing to see. However, works out better for them in the long run. Anyway, Geordie goes and strong arms this deal. Come work with us, we're safe. If you don't, we're going home. Liz says, if there's whispering, we're playing our idol. Don't be, don't be playing funny buggers. Nothing happens here. We get to tribal, the whispering goes on. Just like Liz says, Liz doesn't play an idol because Geordie says stick to the plan. Something is clearly up. When you know where the idols are, it is very easy to outplay an idol. When someone has threatened you with an idol, they do not want to play it. There is a 90% chance that they are going to hold on to it. Your odds of destroying this are good. You do what's done here. Sam, he is expendable. He is just going to be collateral damage and must be, we're all safe, Sam's gone. If Geordie plays. If Geordie doesn't play and it's a tie, doesn't matter. Everyone stacks in on Geordie. It's a win-win for the team because they're going to flush idols, potentially, or they're going to get rid of someone with an idol, potentially, uh, or they end up staying pretty strong and moving forward with their core alliance and having controlled that vote when they shouldn't have been able to have any control of that vote. When there was two people up on the bottom, both packing idols, they should have no control because those two people with the idols have the control. Once you give that information up, now you have time. I mean, even if they pull them out at the very last minute at Tribal or just before Tribal, it still gives them, there is still room to outplay this. Idols are only really truly powerful when nobody knows about them or when your very small amount know. And we, you know, you see that with Shawnee. Shawnee had the two. Her tight little people only knew about one of those idols. No one else knew about them. It was played flawlessly and outplayed all those other people. This is what should have happened. It didn't. We lose Geordie. I'm frustrated as all hell because this is, this was a no-brainer. This was a no-brainer here. 
but people get greedy, people get power hungry, and when you get these idols in your hand and when you think you're invincible, you are most likely gonna go home. And this is what ends up happening. Next, we have that moment where George comes back, the next episode, he's furious, and they, the declaration of war, that comes into play. But Flick now has this idol. Flick's idol has come across, or idol has come across. So it's a very safe vote. Who's, you can go a 50-50 shot. What's Flick going to do? Flick's going to save herself, or she's going to save Matt. That's it. She does end up putting it on Matt. Taking out Ben is just a very easy, safe way to not be screwed over by this idol, if it gets played. Flick being the hero she is, a higher chance she probably would have thought, and played before, she might have, would have, she might have thought about um, the concept of where that vote would go. And she clearly did, and that's why she played it on Matt. Uh, because most people will try and save theirself, themselves. Um, it was an easy vote. Unfortunately, doesn't doesn't damage that big core alliance much at all. Uh, and we see that in the following episode where Sean says, oh, I wasn't really working with Ben anyway, so not a big deal. Turns out the idol was nothing. Uh, but George does pitch a really nice case. And the hard thing about George is he, as, as strategically brilliant as he is, that social game that he lacks really hurts him. This pitch of throw your idol in the fire, let's work it out, come over with us. No, I actually really like that pitch. It's not a bad option. But because you can't trust him, because of his poor social game to a lot of people, George does have a good social game when it comes to the people on the bottom. He, he can really work with those people very easily. Uh, and more often than not, we often forget how important those people on the bottom actually are. The power comes from those people if you know how to work it and manipulate it because the big boys, they're big threats. You wanna get rid of them anyway because you actually have no chance. So it's very easy to grab those, those people, but to get it from Flick who is more of the challenge, more of the, the physical threat sort of player, his social game doesn't really stack up much for that. So you, I, I hear Flick um, George is scary, George is dangerous, can you trust him, can't you trust him? In the grand scheme of if you've ever watched George, if you, if you come at, like, and he says it, if you come at me with peace, I give you peace. peace. Uh, you can easily trust George in that realm. And you see this with Shawnee. And hopefully we see this progressing. I think Shawnee, she's got to win. She is playing flawlessly right now. And I would love to see, and I hope to see, Shawnee and Liz band together to take George out at the correct time. Because George is an amazing shield for them. George is never going to win. You can almost take him to the end. Um, but to take him out and blindside him, because that should also be easy, George would have gone home, or potentially could have gone home, if it wasn't for Shawnee anyway. Um, George is the alpha among the lower physical threats. And that ego is there consistently. He calls himself the king of Samoa. He calls himself the king of Survivor. He's never won. He's very strategically brilliant, but very easy to out-manipulate because he always feels fairly safe. And he'll feel really safe with Shawnee. Uh, and so Shawnee has the easy turn, the easy, the easy way to switch on him very, very quickly. And he will not see it coming. And I hope that's what we see in the future. Final episode, we get a little bit more of the reveal for Simon. Again, we're bookending it with more Simon the Foonery. Um, we get him finding out his idol wasn't real because Flick plays the idol in the end. It's not an idol, it's a clue to an idol. It's a waste of time. She's very lucky they played it safe and went for, oh, well, unfortunately for, the, for the, the Alliance, they played it safe because they could have easily taken out whoever they wanted there in that moment. But then it puts Simon in the worst position. And once again, we, and we had that great quote from, like, I didn't think we didn't get a, I mean, still, it's a very good quote. What would God want? God doesn't like Paige. That was a great quote. But then we get this great quote on, episode, on Sunday's episode from Haley: fix your face or get your face better or whatever it was to Simon. Simon's face is, when he doesn't know what's coming, Simon's face tells you everything. He is just shocked. That mouth is completely open. 
when he finds out his idol isn't an idol and what happened and the, the ramifications of his game, whew, he is freaking out. And it's very funny to watch. He does get lucky again, even though he wasn't going home. He, he's now so bad at this game right now. He's zero threat. People want him gone. This is the perfect time to make moves that no one's expecting. He's done us dirty, or he, whether he knew or didn't know, he's really screwed us over. Let's just get rid of him. He's, he's, he's a waste of space right now. And this is the moment where you do see Liz and Nina and Dave and Sam hopefully start that strike attempt on Haley. Really, really great plan because this is where everything, this is where everything um, opens up for you. When you have a clear, when you have a clear thing, a clear target in mind because of everything that's gone on and the chaos that was brought about it, there's a lot of moving pieces here and you can move through these pieces very easily. And this is what would have happened. I, I'm pretty convinced we would have seen Haley go that day. But we get the mutiny. Now, this actually works out better for those four. Liz goes back to her people. Her people literally being Shawnee. Shawnee is, George is an alliance member, but her person is Shawnee. That's it. She doesn't care about anyone else. Shawnee actually doesn't care about anyone else. It's those two. They're a power couple. They get reunited again. These three over here, that really great plan doesn't get executed that little bit too early. Uh, and it might have been that little bit too early. Once that had happened, once that fracture had happened, they become public enemy number one. Um, Sean's going to be pissed off. Um, well, Haley's gone. Uh, we'll line with we'll line with Simon. You're expect we're expecting a merge pretty soon. Uh, that that puts a bigger target on their head. I think um, it would have been great. I would have loved to have seen it, mind you. But it does put a little bit of a bigger target on their head a little earlier than they probably would want. Would have been great, but now they get some breathing space. They have solidified this alliance. They know. They know that they can pretend that never happened because Liz just got up and left. And now there was that little bit of whispering from Nina, but now they can let that be completely silent. That alliance, that's, that becomes a secret alliance that hopefully bring in Shawnee, very easy to take out anyone else. They become a clear majority because right now Haley and Sean think they're with them. Easy to keep on going. Flick and Matt come back. Great, we've got this massive majority, but underneath that, they're not even there. They're potentially, hopefully, with a Nina, uh, with a, a Shawnee and a, and a Liz, who has George, who has Stevie, who has Jerry. They become this massive alliance, this massive majority that you don't real, no one else is gonna realize they're a massive majority. On top of that, there are three, and you, you, have, multiple, you have multiple alliances within this, which means Technically, there is also room to move that you're not, you're not flipping to another place and being completely on the bottom. Because that's a problem when you jump shit from alliance to alliance because they take you because you're on the bottom. Of, you're number five on that alliance. Come over to here and be number four, but you're still at the bottom. Dave, Nina, and Sam moving across, they're a strong three within a very strong two, kind of a strong three, and some outliers. A, a Jerry and a Steve who who are actually going to be at the bottom and they can they can move and wheel and deal within that alliance will help which will help their game further on down the track uh, so the mutiny probably comes at a very good time for them long game it's not a, we don't see the massive move and they might not get that cool epic move because it would have been a great blind side they might not get that but they will get a solid alliance moving forward and that's pretty exciting uh, I am assuming we see the, the, well, the heroes now with that conflict of Liz and George now have butting heads. I'm assuming they're going to go to tribal um, this week. I don't see George going home. I don't think Shawnee would allow that just yet. Uh, I think they could still get rid of a flick or a map. Possibly be would be Matt because it just seems to be the newbies just keep getting picked off one by one, and they're all kind of useless aside from Liz, really, and 
you know, mate, Dave, Dave's just lucky. Liz has had to work a bit harder and had to really, we see some really good stuff from Liz's game. Dave, Dave doesn't really have to work much. He's kind of following along, but he's there and he's lucky to be there because he's been, he's been aligned with that alpha, alpha male group for quite some time, which does provide a lot of security because you don't go to tribal council as often. Uh, anyway, tell me what you thought. Leave your comments in the chat below or the comment below and I'll love, I'd love to give you a comment back, chat back about what you think, what I think uh, and let's get the discussion going. Thanks and I'll see you next week.